Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And in today's video, we'll give you the latest update on a transfer portal target for the Red Raiders, as well as the Lubbock Avalanche Journal and Don Williams discussing, well, the staff for Texas Tech men's basketball and Grant McCaslin and what he had to say about why the staff is taking so long to materialize. But before we do that, we are 45 subs away from a monumental number for this channel. Yes, 8,000 subs. Can we get there by the end of the week? I think Red Raider Nation can help me out and get us there. We enjoy interacting with y'all each and every day here on the channel. It's the most interacted YouTube channel for Red Raider Nation and the fastest growing. So be a part of this large community of Red Raiders and hit that subscribe button. All right, let's jump into the news. But a couple of quick notes surrounding Texas Tech Athletics that I want to get out of the way before we jump into Texas Tech men's basketball. All right, Texas Tech football target and four-star edge Emmanuel Oki actually committed to Tennessee this morning at the time of this recording on Wednesday, May 17th. But in some really positive news for Texas Tech Athletics, mainly Texas Tech baseball, they announced that the Matador Club has signed every Texas Tech baseball player to a five-figure NIL deal. This is the third such program on the Texas Tech campus in the athletic department that has gotten this. Obviously, football was the big one with the 25K, and then the other one was Texas Tech softball. So now you can add baseball to the list, and you got football, softball, and now baseball making five figures from the Matador Club. And this is the third such program on campus, and honestly, good stuff for the baseball program as um I don't know if a lot of people know this. They have limited scholarships and they have to, you know, quarter them up, half them up, three quarters them up, however they want to divvy them up. This is good for their players to have some security in terms of, hey, making sure that we have enough money in terms of rent and everything like that. So great job by the Matador Club on that front. All right. Let's jump into the Texas Tech men's basketball news, and we're going to talk about a portal target that has been getting a lot of buzz within Red Raider Nation. Is That is Tyron Lawrence, the Vandy guard transfer that is currently in the NBA draft process. Going that, through that, did not get an invitation to the NBA Combine after participating in the G League events, but he is still in the draft process. And in the portal. Now, the teams that are going after him do include Texas Tech. It's Memphis, Auburn, and Bandy as well. When you look at what he did last season, he averaged 13 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, 1.7 assists, while shooting 36% from three last season in Nashville. Also had a game-winning shot against the number six team in the country, the Tennessee Volunteers. Now, this will be an interesting decision to monitor for a few reasons. Obviously, first and foremost, Texas Tech is involved in it, but also they have close ties to Lawrence that I don't think a lot of people may know about. All right, Chokey AC, one of the assistants alongside Matt Bauer and Grant McCaslin, was actually Lawrence's coach at Sunrise Christian Academy in Kansas. So there is a close connection there. And again, this will be interesting because will he stay in the draft and try and go the G League route, maybe try and get a two-way? Where does he want to go in that regard? But if he does come back to school, Texas Tech is firmly in the mix in that regard alongside other schools that I mentioned previously in Auburn, Memphis, and Vandy. Those feel like the top four with, if we're being fully transparent about it, Auburn probably is in the lead in this regard. But scholarships are going quick, and Texas Tech is making Tyron a high priority. Tyrant, excuse me, a high priority in the transfer portal right now. So don't be surprised if you hear a little bit more steam or see a little bit more smoke when it comes to his name connected to the Red Raiders. All right, I gotta ask you. You know how this goes. Will Texas Tech land Tyron Lawrence? If he decides to come back to college and goes to the college game route, a simple why for yes or in for no, does that relationship with AC pay dividends, the tech assistant coach who coached him at Sunrise Christian Academy in Kansas, does it pay dividends for the Red Raiders and they can land the former four-star recruit via the transfer portal? All right. Let's jump into the Texas Tech men's basketball coaching staff news as according to the Lubbock Avalanche Journal and Don Williams, um, great follows by the way, they are always in the know over there. Grant McCaslin is holding out for the quote unquote big one when it comes to his staff. Now, 
I've mentioned a couple times, if you were a loyal listener here on the channel, um, and again, giving you daily videos and updates when it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball and the news and rumors surrounding it, that I personally, again, this is me talking here, I would be pretty surprised if this staff wasn't filled out by the start of summer classes. Now, summer classes start, I believe, June 6th. May have the date wrong, but it's in that neighborhood, okay? That's when summer one starts. And you want to have everybody you possibly can from every recruit that you have in your class, whether that's freshman or via the portal, or your staff included, all on campus to really start that grind because that's when it really starts for these guys in terms of the summer workouts, getting guys into shape and getting them ready to go for when real nitty gritty practice starts around when, well, fall classes start, right? But that means they can still work out with them in the summertime and everything like that. So I'm interested to see how that goes. And listen, I'm all for Grant McCaslin trying to land the quote unquote big one as he called it in this Lubbock Avalanche Journal article. But it'll be interesting to see where he goes in terms of the final three staff spots. Now, I think you want to get somebody close to Dallas-Fort Worth. You want to get somebody maybe involved in Houston. One of those two big Metroplex areas when it comes to high school recruiting at the basketball level, because again, those are two of the highly, highly coveted destinations in terms of just Having somebody that knows the AAU circuit and the high school ranks in those big areas, because we're talking really two of the best basketball markets at a high school level in the country. I mean, Dallas might have, might take the number one spot right now. And if they're not number one, they're at least top three when it comes to talent in the city of Dallas and the surrounding DFW area, right? I'm interested to see where he goes. Um, I will say this because I haven't brought up this name um, in a couple of weeks, honestly, because there really hasn't been much talk of the staff. They've done a very good job of keeping it quiet. And really, this Lubbock Avalanche Journal article was the first time that I've heard Grant McCaslin really talk any kind of in-depth or show any one card, quote unquote, that he may have. But I want to bring up this name because I think it's important and I want to say it again. Until this staff is either complete and he's not on it or he is on this staff, Ben McCollum will be a name linked to Texas Tech as an assistant coach for the Red Raiders because of his relationship with Grant McCaslin. Will he be on the staff? I think that's TBD. It wouldn't shock me either way, but he will be in the conversation and should be in the conversation and linked to a Red Raiders staff position until either he's not on it or he is on it, right? That's just how it is, simple and plain. Ben McCollum, again, Northwest Missouri State head coach at the D2 level. He's known as an offensive wizard, a basketball savant on the offensive side of the floor, okay? He will be involved in this, right? Will he be on the staff? Again, TBD, but he deserves to be mentioned in this regard as a potential staff member for the Red Raiders going into next season. All right. Before I get out of here, I got to ask you one more question down in the comments below. Answer this one for me. Your one word to describe really this whole Texas Tech men's basketball hiring assistant coaches process. I know that's a weird way to word the question, but just let me know down in the comments because I know some people are like, how the hell are you recruiting if you don't have a full staff? Others are like, hey, let him do his thing. I'm kind of in the middle. I'll ask a couple questions, but I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it. Just a personal opinion, right? And I want to hear yours with just one word on how to describe this whole process of Texas Tech men's basketball filling out their coaching staff. Again, I am RC Maxfield reminding you, if you want to be a part of the fastest growing Texas Tech community here on YouTube and the most interactive, again, 45 subs away from 8K. Hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.